I'm going to show you how I use iMovie's voiceover tool to edit. This pro level technique I'm going to show you can really help you focus and streamline your editing process. Let's jump in. All right, here we are in iMovie. This is iMovie version 10.3.10 .10, running on Mac OS 13.6 for your reference. And I have a project open with a few clips of B-roll in the media browser. So let's say I want to edit together a B-roll sequence with a voiceover, like you'd see in a faceless video or a tech review or demo video. Well, the first step would be to record the voiceover. So there are a few ways to do that here in iMovie. When I hover my cursor over the timeline, this little microphone icon appears on the bottom left corner of the viewer. Now, if we hover th over that icon, we get the tooltip record voiceover. I'll select the microphone icon and the bottom of the viewer changes to show the voiceover recording tool. I can also get to the voiceover tool by going up to iMovie's top menu and selecting window then going down in the menu and selecting record voiceover or I can use the keyboard shortcut, the V key on my keyboard. But notice the red record button is grayed out. If I try to click on it, nothing happens. I just get error beeps. I can't record. This gotcha throws off a lot of people. So what's going on? Well, to record a voiceover in iMovie, you need to have a clip on the timeline to connect your voiceover to. Now I could just add the first clip I'm going to use in my edit, but for maximum efficiency and flexibility during the editing process, I use a placeholder clip instead. So I'll go up to the top of the browser and select backgrounds. I'll grab a background, anyone will do. I'll pick industrial. I'll click and drag it to the beginning of the timeline. This is my placeholder clip. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline. Now, if we look over at the voiceover tool, the red record button is now active, which means I can record my voiceover. But before I do that, I need to set up my microphone. And I can do that right in the voiceover tool by clicking on the voiceover options button right next to the record button. And I get this settings menu. The first setting is input source. So right now it says system setting, which means the voiceover tool is going to use whatever microphone or input I have selected under system settings or system preferences, sound input. But if I click on the text that says system setting, I get a menu of all the microphones and sound inputs I have connected to my Mac. So I can choose the microphone I want to use directly from this list if I want to. So the microphone I'm using is the Rode VideoMic NTG, so I'll select that. And as soon as I did that, this volume slider jumped into action. This slider controls the input volume or level of your microphone. To set a good microphone level, I speak into the microphone at the volume I'm going to use when I record, very important. Then I adjust the volume slider until this level meter over here turns yellow during the loudest parts of my speech. This is what we call peak level. Now it's okay to peak in the yellow, but you never want to peak in the red. That leads to digital distortion, which sounds horrible and can't be fixed. So be mindful of your input levels. You also have this setting down here, mute project. So when this is checked, iMovie will mute any other audio tracks in your project while you record your voiceover. Now, the majority of the time you'll want this setting checked to lessen distractions while you record. So now that my microphone is set up, I'm ready to record my voiceover. With the playhead at the spot on the timeline where I want to start my recording, I'll hit the record button. And I get this three second countdown with beeps. And then I'm recording. Now you'll notice the record button changed into a stop button. And you can see as you record, the playhead races forward to show you where you are on the timeline as you're recording. To stop recording, you can click on the stop button over here, or you can hit the space bar on your keyboard. And if we look at the timeline, we see my voiceover clip. It's even labeled with the prefix VO and the take number. Very handy. I'll play back my voiceover and then I'm recording. Now you'll notice the record now something sounds weird and that's because iMovie automatically applies an equalization filter 
two voiceover recordings. And I know this by looking up here at the toolbar above the viewer. The noise reduction and equalizer button is activated. Now, if I click on it, the settings open and I can see over beside the equalizer setting that voice enhance is being applied to my voiceover. I'm going to turn that off by clicking on the equalizer menu and selecting flat equalization. You can also see that the volume button is active. If I click on that, you can see that iMovie has also activated lower volume of other clips, its ducking feature. So that when you're recording your voiceover, any other audio tracks on your timeline will have their volume lowered so that the voiceover track takes priority. Now, I prefer to mix my sound levels manually, so I'll uncheck lower volume of other clips. Now, if you want to know more about how to use the lower volume of other clips function or how to edit and mix sound levels in iMovie, I have another tutorial on that link in the description. Now, if you're not happy with your voiceover recording, you can select it in the timeline and hit the delete key to get rid of it. And start again by placing the playhead where you want to start recording and hitting the record button. Now I should just point out, when you delete a voiceover clip from the timeline, it's not deleted from your project. So if I go up to the left column of the interface and select my project under Project Media, I have access to all of my voiceover recordings. So when working on iMovie projects like this with lots of B-roll and voiceover, I like to record the entire voiceover first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and come right back. All right, so here's my entire voiceover attached to my placeholder clip in the timeline. It looks pretty good. But to optimize my voiceover track, I'm gonna select it and making sure I'm in the volume section of the toolbar, I'll go over and select the auto button. This optimizes the volume level of my voiceover and gives it a bit more power. Now, inevitably I make flubs while recording my voiceover and or I have some long pauses that I wanna get rid of. So the next step in my process is to edit my voiceover track. And it's pretty simple. I just scrub to where I wanna make an edit, select the voiceover clip at that spot, hit Command B on my keyboard to split the clip. Then I can click and drag on the clip's ends to trim out the sections I don't want. Then I can click and drag the clip to reposition it to get the right timing. All right, let's edit this section in the voiceover clip. Scrub over to that spot. Click to select the voiceover clip. Hit Command B on my keyboard to split the clip. Gotcha. So why can't I split the voiceover clip at this spot? Because if I split it there, the newly created voiceover clip won't have a clip in the video track above it to attach to. Remember, each voiceover clip needs to be attached to a clip in the main timeline. So to fix this issue, I'm gonna click and drag out the end of my placeholder clip until it covers my entire voiceover. Now I can jump in anywhere on my voiceover clip, hit Command B to split the clip and make my edits because any newly created clips will be attached to the placeholder clip in the main timeline. All right, I went ahead and edited the rest of my voiceover and you can see all of the voiceover clips are attached to the placeholder clip on the main timeline. This is known in the video production business as a radio cut because I just edited the audio to taste. Next step, I add the visuals to the edit. Which visuals do you put where, you may ask? Well, that's determined in large part by what the voiceover is saying. That's the magic of this editing technique. The voiceover acts as a guide track, taking a lot of the guesswork out of the editing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my first shot. I'll play the voiceover track. Here's another webcam no-no. The web And I'm gonna stop playback after I say, not a very flattering angle. Not a very flattering angle. I'm gonna place my first clip over that first line of voiceover. So with my playhead at the end of that line, I'll select the placeholder clip, then hit Command B on my keyboard to split the placeholder clip at that spot. Then I'll go back up to the media browser, select my first clip. I'll click and drag on the yellow handles to set the range of the clip that I want to use. 
Now watch carefully. I'll click and drag the selected clip in the browser and place it over the first clip in the timeline, the one I created by splitting the placeholder clip. I get this film strip icon with a green plus symbol. When I release the mouse, I get this menu that allows me to overwrite or replace the clip in the timeline with the clip I dragged on top of it from the browser. I'll select Replace from Start. That will add in my clip from the browser, starting from the beginning of the range I selected, or the endpoint. And there is the first video clip of my edit. Now for the remaining clips I want to add to my edit, I don't need to use the replace method. I'll add in my second clip to show you. I'll place the playhead right after my first clip. Then I'll go up to the browser, select my second clip, set the range. But to add this second clip to the timeline right after my first clip, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut W on my keyboard to insert my selected clip into the timeline right after my first clip. And you can see it pushes the placeholder clip down the timeline. Then I can just adjust my video and voiceover clips accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and use the insert function to add the rest of the clips to my edit. So now that I've done that, I can delete the placeholder clip and go through my edit on the timeline and adjust my visuals and voiceover to taste. And there's my finished edit with big help from iMovie's voiceover tool. Webcam shooting up your nostrils. Not a very and if you want to know more about creating pro-level sound in iMovie, have a look at this video on my channel.